Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined by Ali Fame, a fellow massage therapist in Colorado. Hello. Hello, thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here. And you are the owner and founder of Needing Hands in Steamboat Springs, a, yep. a group practice. Uh, maybe that's not the right word, um, um, a clinic. Yeah. So it's a business that I've built over the years and um, I've, I've had independent contractors working for me for years. Okay, great. And you're also the founder of the Massage Business Mama. Yep. Which is a resource for massage therapists, body workers, and beyond. I would suspect anyone building um, a small service-based body work type business. Uh, yeah, definitely yeah. more... More catered towards massage therapists yeah. for sure, but yeah, it's a it's a blog online that um, I started working on about two years ago, and it kind of came out of of my desire to create a resource when I was trying to go back to work after having my son, and I was just a little nervous about um, if I'd be able to have the same type of compassion and and uh, just enthusiasm for the field after having a kid. And so I, I, I scoured the internet looking for resources and didn't yeah. really find something that fit my needs. And so I decided to create something. So the angle is really how to navigate parenting while being a massage therapist. But so that was kind of the initial, initial yeah. idea behind it. And then it, it morphed. It's changed a lot. It's, I feel like now it's just a great resource for massage therapists in all stages of their career. Cool. Yeah. So um, to begin, if you wouldn't mind, give us a little origin story about how you became a massage therapist to begin with. Yeah. So I blame it on my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, as a kid, she would always uh, stay up later reading to me if I massaged her. That was uh, like our deal. Yeah. And um, so I, I always loved it. And I always kind of just thought it was really interesting and wanted to pursue it, but my dad was pretty adamantly opposed to it. Interesting. And so I went to college and I got a art major and a business minor, and then I graduated and I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I was floundering and making some really poor decisions for myself. And I kind of went to my mom again and was like, I don't know what I'm doing and what should I do? And she said, you know, the only thing that you've ever talked about consistently is massage, and I think you should just go for it. And so I did, and it was the best decision of my life. Awesome. Yeah. So you're telling me that I should be leveraging my two kids to give me body work? 100%. For <laughs> 100%, yep. I mean, they're, yep. they're like six and eight. I guess they could start to... Oh, yeah. Wow. She, had me, she had me starting at a very young age. For sure. Smart. <laughs> Your mom, she's she's on top of it. She's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, so how did that transition into owning your own practice and hiring out other people? Yeah. So um, I think, you know, having that business minor in college, um, you know, kind of helped me developed that idea that I wanted to kind of create something bigger. Um, I also come from a long line of entrepreneurs. Mm. And so the idea of working for myself was not foreign. And um, the idea of kind of creating something bigger just kind of felt natural because of that lineage. And um, and it started slowly. It was interesting because I, I always had this kind of vision to have people people working for me and I knew that, but I wasn't quite to that point. And then I just got a phone call one day from a guy who said, I want to start working for you. I, I found your website and I'm moving to town and I need a job. And, and I said, Oh, okay, well, I guess, I guess I'm starting this vision that I had a little bit yeah. sooner than I thought. So oh, cool. And then yeah. you built, you built that up and then eventually you, you added this layer of supporting other massage and body work businesses. Yeah. The massage business mama. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I I think I just kind of at some point realized that I couldn't I couldn't do as much body work as I had in the past and um that the managing of therapists, you know, I didn't 
I didn't always want to kind of have that as part of my, my process. And so I, I was trying to diversify a little bit and, um, and also, like I said, create a resource for, for people that kind of had questions. Cool. Okay. So the, the focus of this current project, 50 massage therapists, 50 states, you're in Colorado. What, yep. can, what can you teach us about becoming a massage therapist and maintaining a license in the fine state of Colorado? Yeah, so I feel like our requirements are not that stringent. <laughs> um, it's a 500 hour requirement. Yeah. 500 hours from a board approved school. Uh, and then you have to be 18 and you have to take the MBLEX and then you have to go through a licensing process through DORA, the Department of Regulatory Affairs. Okay. And that's a fingerprinting process and a background check. And then to maintain that, you just have to pay a fee every two years. Uh, continuing education requirements? No. Not at all. Yeah. No. Interesting. So, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't talked to enough yet to know where that falls on the scale. It's, it's lower than Oregon, but it's less than New, but Oregon's less than New York. So it's like, New York's got this like thousand hour fairly rigorous requirement. I think it's kind of great. Yeah. Honestly, like I, I feel like, um, I feel like our requirements should be a little bit more stringent. Yeah. And then there are, I, I, I keep saying this in these podcasts that I haven't looked it up yet. I just need to look it up. There are states without any requirements. So yeah. You're still above some other places. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. So uh, having said that, what, what are you, and this is something I've been asking about, a, a national standard, what do you think that would look like and what would it do for the profession? And would it just be a, a test that everyone has to take or would it mandate the number of hours or I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I guess I, I think it's interesting because I, I went to the AMTA national conference this past year. I don't know if you're an AMTA member or um, ABMP or if you've been to any of those national conferences, but, um, <clears throat> I found it really interesting because this past year I took on an adjunct teaching position at a local massage school cool. and not a huge role, just kind of one day a month and, and have been teaching at the school. And so when I signed up to go to the AMTA conference, they have the option where you can either go on one of the days, you can either go the student track or you can go the teacher track. And I chose to do the teacher track, which was, it felt like a little bit of a stretch for me because I'm like a new, newer teacher. And, um, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm as smart as many of the teachers there, but I thought I'll try it out and see and, and just kind of get a pulse on what the, the thought process is right now, kind of on a national level for the education system and massage. And my perspective going in was like, I feel like, we really need to be pushing for high standards and that, that that's important to create therapists that are competent and that, that reflect positively on our industry. And largely what the attitude in this teacher day was, was that we need to find more ways to help students who are struggling to push them through the program and we need to lower our requirements to make it easier for them to pass. And we just need to figure out ways to pass the students, pass the students, pass the students. And like I said, my, my perspective is very different from that. And I was in the minority, largely in the minority in, wow. in these meetings that I was in, which was kind of shocking to me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like just really does our service a dis or our, our industry a disservice in that we want the schools to be preparing therapists to go out and represent us in the, the most positive, high quality way that they can. Yeah. And so, so I, I do think that a standard across the country would be wonderful, mm -hmm. but I don't know that we're going to get there anytime soon based right. on my experience at this conference. And where and, uh, is that coming from? What, I mean, were they just like, we need to, the schools need to 
get students in and out and because there's like a natural burnout in the industry and we need to keep keep the number of therapists like what what is the why wouldn't you want to elevate the level of the education i think that it was like coming from like an honorable place of like just trying to like kind of i think you know a lot of us are kind of bleeding hearts and so i think it was like you know just really wanting to like help as many people as possible and make sure that uh, I mean, I, that makes that makes a certain amount of sense but you're going to help more people in the long run if you're educating people better i mean that was my perspective <laughs> but like i said i felt like i was a minority in in that in that feeling and um or is it, or do they maybe think like, let's get them through the requirement and then they'll continue to study? I mean, most of us, whether or not our state has a, has a requirement, we tend to be curious about the body and learning and techniques. And I think there's an inclination to get a lot of continuing education, even if there is no requirement. I but, mean... I think certainly a lot of us feel that way, but I, I don't know that all of us feel that way. Right. Hmm. Um, well, this is quite a conundrum. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I, I was shocked. I was honestly, I was shocked. And then another thing, another perspective that I have on if we were to have kind of a national standard um, is, so in Colorado, we have the DORA the Department of Regulatory Affairs that that helps with the licensing process. And one thing that I've noticed is that it takes a really long time for therapists to go through that program mm. or to get that process complete. So I, I've had therapists who've come to work for me straight out of school and they're like, yeah, I just got to get my license. And for five months, they're sitting working as a receptionist waiting for their license to come through. Oh, wow. And so my concern is if we were to go to like a national standard, that it would have to be done in a more timely manner because I just think that it's so hard for these students who come out with all these loans and they think that they're going to be working right away. I don't think that in Colorado, at least, I don't feel like we're preparing students for the reality that it could take, it could take a really long time for them to get licensed. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like if it were to happen on a national level, like it would have to move quicker than that. And it's, it, it doesn't always take five months for, for massage therapists to get licensed. Like I've had some therapists that it's taken a month to get them through, but those are the therapists who are calling the agency every day to kind of try to push their. Right. Their, it sounds like a bureaucratic bottleneck situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ugh. Well, we'll have to all sort of keep an eye on that as a possibility for the future, I suppose. It's just a perspective anyways, yeah. you know? I mean, I think sometimes when you take things to a national level that it becomes more bureaucratic, so. Yeah, there's that too. Hmm. So, so as we record this, uh, we are in the, the coronavirus, COVID-19 crisis. So I wonder if you could help me take a temperature of your state, what's going on down there. Um, I, I, I'm guessing everyone's shut down like they are here and what you're doing personally and what you're doing with the people that work for you. Yeah, so we, we are closed right now. Um, the last day that I personally worked was the 12th uh, and my practice closed the 15th. Um, and I think in Colorado, it's going to be really interesting because our economy is so tourist driven that I think the recovery will be quite interesting here. Um, and so what I'm seeing a lot of is people making really tough decisions about whether or not to hold on to their spaces that they've been renting and you know, how quickly we'll be able to recover. Um, I know my therapists were all independent contractors, which I know there's a huge debate about the independent contractor employee thing. And um, I actually, I got audited a couple of years ago from the, the Colorado Unemployment Office. And um, they deemed, deemed that it was true that my therapists were independent contractors. And so... Um, you know, it, that hadn't really been too much of an issue until 
this. And, you know, I mean, I feel for them, you know, they're, they're, uh, there was a lot of insecurity at, at the beginning, but it's, it's great. The stimulus package that has gone through, although, um, I think that I, I don't know of anyone who's received any stimulus money from, from the unemployment that was opened up to independent contractors ah. yet here in, in Colorado. I don't know if that's true in Oregon. I mean, I haven't, I haven't talked to anyone that's, that's received anything. I just, I knew that it was open now, but yeah. You know, there's a lot of options that are seem sort of open and closed. Like some of the loans have run out of funding already. And <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It's sort of a wait and see with some of that. Yeah, yeah for sure. And that, you know, that's scary. Is, uh, your, is your clientele at Needing Hands also very tourist dependent? Are you seeing? So ours is, ours is about 50 50 here, 50% local and 50% tourists. So, you know, because of the, the, my feeling that, you know, tourism is going to take a while to recover. I think, you know, there's going to be some downsizing that happens here, which is sad. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's sort of a a somber state of affairs, but I think we're all (laughs) sort of, we're all sort of going through that together. Are you doing anything like remote? virtual sessions or yeah so I haven't done any like virtual sessions but what I have been doing is I've been doing some YouTube recordings of self-care videos yeah and I've been sending those to clients and just trying to really stay up on uh, communication with clients and just making sure that they know that we're still here and that we still care and yeah, that was sort of my angle as opposed to try to sell anything at this time was more to just build up the content and communicate and maybe just be a resource. Yeah, for sure. So I guess we've touched on it a little bit in, in your local community, but what do you what do you think this this is gonna do to massage therapy going forward? Uh, what um, changes do you see coming out of the crisis? Well, I, I kind of feel like solo practitioners will have a little bit easier time rebounding from this. Okay. Um, so I'm feeling for a lot of the clinic owners and spa owners right now, just because I think, you know, our standards for cleanliness are going to be increased and it's harder to make sure that a staff is adhering to to procedures that you that you kind of right. bring in place as opposed to just a solo practitioner so that's one thing that i see coming from this um i do yeah. think sorry go ahead no, i was going to say like you get i've read some sort of varying accounts like massage therapists are going to essentially be working in a hazmat suit now and like fully covered like this like really extreme measures and then everyone sort of seems to agree that maybe a lot of practices haven't been you know they've been not washing the the top blanket between every session and that's something that obviously needs to be addressed and and you know needed to change before this anyways so yeah yeah yeah, I know. I I am also wondering about like the antibodies tests that are starting to happen. Okay. And if you know something like that will really help us get back to work having yeah. having those tests. The test. I don't really know a whole lot about those tests yet, but. Or there is some someone online was arguing that you should not really be going back to work until you've had a test like that and that you can guarantee your clients have, have had that test. And it's just kind of- I mean, but it's test. always changing, right? Like, yeah. you Take know, that that's great to get that test, but then, you know, you come into contact with more people and- Right. It's hard to say. <laughs> exactly. But I do think people are going to be wanting massage. I think that, you know, I think that we're going to be very deprived, especially those of us who've been- quarantines, you know, without a partner. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my two kids are getting body work. It's about 
Yeah. Until I train them to give me body work. <laughs> yeah. I see you're, you're getting ideas today. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was browsing around your, the website, the massage business mama website. And I saw something interesting. I just wanted to ask you about that. I hadn't, yeah. uh, hadn't realized before there's uh, lots of resources, not just for, for building a clinic or building a practice, but even for new graduates. It did not occur to me that you have that you have a little graph on there that says that over 40%, the, the biggest category of massage therapists work out of their clients' homes. Yeah. Is that, that's true? I, that, I would not have guessed that. I mean, I, I know, I know a fair number of therapists who don't have offices who just do mobile massage. That's wild to me. Yeah. I, do you think that statistic is skewed by the rise of some of those apps? I mean, I think that the, those, it's funny that you say that because I just was going to mention those apps. And I think that, you know, that's making it easier for therapists to not have to really build a clientele, but to still have a practice and not have a space. So yeah, I yeah. think that's probably contributing to that for sure. Huh. That's really interesting. Yeah. I would encourage anyone to go check out the massagebusinessmama.com website for, for a variety of resources for, for new graduates to the, and beyond. So yeah. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> a lot of things going on over there. And you did launch a podcast called Align with the Business. I'm the sorry. Massage. Align with the Massage Business Mama. Yep. And you yeah. have a co-host over there who yep. you can shout out right now. Yeah. My girlfriend, Becca, and I, we started the podcast and we just launched a couple weeks ago. So that's been pretty exciting. And she's For, in another uh, state or another city? She's so she flips between Idaho and Colorado. So ah. right now she's currently in Colorado. She's living in Breckenridge, Colorado. Ah. And then she'll be going back to Idaho at some point. No, does she want to talk about Idaho? <laughs> I'm sure she would love to talk about Idaho. Yeah, I can I can connect you for sure. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Check another state off the list. Yeah, for sure. That's incredible. Well, uh, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely. On the Thanks. Massage Hodge podcast and talking about Colorado and everything going on there. Really appreciate it. Wish you the best. And we will wave goodbye. But I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit after we stop this recording. And thanks again. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on the show. Okay. Bye.